Praise the Lord. Mark chapter number 11. Anybody ever gotten anything out of Mark chapter number 11? Is it possible to get anything else out of Mark chapter number 11? Let's read in verse number 20. You, you know the context. Jesus here cursed the fig tree and it withered away. Peter in verse 21 said to him, Behold, the fig tree you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto him, Have faith in God. Ooh, there's no words that thrill me better than those words right there. Have faith in God. Tell your neighbor, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to learn to have faith in God. Amen. Uh, so, uh, verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be that. Now notice he's saying, this is how faith operates. He said, you'll say to this mountain, notice Jesus expected us to talk to things. He didn't expect us to just, just, there's a place for talking to God about things, but he didn't expect us to just talk to God about things. He expected us to talk to things. That's one thing I've been uh, in the ministry now for, I don't know how many years. That makes it sound probably more than it is, but you know what? I just don't remember right now. Uh, 19, let's see, it'd be uh, 30 years, 30, 30 plus years. And uh, no, this is 30th year, I think. Anyway, um, somebody else is keeping track. I asked them. <laughs> and so, uh, 32. All right. And so uh, we, you know, we just uh, notice over the years of ministry that this is something people have trouble with. They're much more ready to talk to somebody else about their, what they're going through or even talk to God. But talking to the thing, or talking to the circumstances, or talking to the storm, or talking to the test, or talking to the devil, and telling him, peace be still, you know, whatever, that just seems to escape so many Christians. I remember uh, talking to uh, a relative about a situation, about another relative, and needed to, uh, we, some of us relatives needed to talk to this relative, and they were known for explosions, you know, really yield to an evil spirit. And so we all got in a circle, and they all prayed. And when they were done praying, I said, now I take authority over that spirit that tries to, you know, influence that person in the name of Jesus. And I command you to, to not hinder them in what we need to talk to them about. And that was the easiest thing. In fact, the glory filled the house, filled the room. It was just, it was just an amazing thing. And my, and, and my family was just amazed and wonder, wonderful, blessed about it. And, but my brother came to me and he looked at me and he said, I saw what you did there. Because they were used to the thing exploding. I mean, you got to talk to somebody about something that's not easy. And, and then they explode. They're used to that. I mean, that's just par for the course, you know. But see, it didn't happen that way. But see, trying to get people to understand that and hear that, Jesus said here, have faith in God, whoever will say unto this mountain. You got to learn to talk to circumstances. Say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He's not talking to God. He, or he's not telling us to talk to God about the mountain. He's saying talk to the mountain. I don't know. I, 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 you could take this or leave this. I don't know if it's necessarily true, but I heard somebody say something one time. Uh, they said, faith in God is believing what God said will come to pass. The faith of God is believing what you say will come to pass. You ought to think about that statement. We ought to have faith in God, shouldn't we? But there's a place Jesus actually said here, have the faith of God. Use literally the faith of God. How do you use it? You use it with your mouth. You use it with what you say. Now, let me warn you about something. I'm going to be preaching more on faith. Let me warn you about something. You're going to be tempted to say, I've heard all this. I learned, I, I've, been, I've been listening to the Word of God along this line probably longer than you have. There might be some that have it, maybe longer than me. But I've been listening to the Word and feeding on the Word, and I'm still just as thrilled. I got so high yes. last night meditating on this. Yes. Come on. I, got, I just got higher in a kite. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's when, whenever it's working for you, you're still yeah. thrilled about it. That's right. It's people that aren't doing it. Yeah. That they're not thrilled about it. So have faith in God. Have the faith of God. Hallelujah. The faith of God believes that what I say will come to pass. 
Hallelujah. Then he said, Be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Notice he didn't say, He'll have what God says. God says something, that's important. We've got to believe what God said. But he said, You'll have what you say. Yeah. It God, if God said it, that's the beginning. But just believing what God said is not going to make it come to pass. You've got to say. He didn't say you'll have what you believe. He said, you and I will have what we say. Amen. So let's go on verse 24. That's, verse 23 is releasing faith in your words. Verse 24 is releasing faith in your prayer. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. Tell your neighbor when you pray. When you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Yes, <clears throat> my, my, my. As much as that's been preached on, especially in churches like ours, I still think we haven't got it so many times. I'm including myself. I'm not just bashing anybody. I just, I just look at this and I'm like, my, my, my. There's so many things, so many things that would work on if we'd do it. If we'd do it. Tell your neighbor we're going to do it. Now, verse 24, we, we could spend a lot of time on all of this. Uh, and, uh, but I want to look here something in verse 24. We learned many things over the years as we've studied faith from this verse. These are some of the most important words of Jesus on the subject of faith. And, uh, but see, how, how many of you believe there's more we could get out of this? There is. Now, one thing that this verse is teaching us, verse 24, I'm talking about Mark 11, 24. Therefore, what things serve you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. It's teaching us that there needs to be a definite point of making a faith transaction with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A definite point of releasing your faith. I don't know if that thrills you as much as it thrills me. But see, I've had to learn over the years that faith coming is not enough. The Bible said faith, Mark, I mean uh, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And hearing the word, hearing God's word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, I've, I've talked to many of you. Uh, you've said things like this over the years. They've, you've said, I don't know why nobody ever taught me these things. Yeah. You know, I went to church for years. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't anybody teach me these things? Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you're excited about them and, you're, and your faith is growing in areas that it didn't used to grow because yeah. you're hearing these things. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You're hearing you're the righteousness of God yeah. in Christ. You're hearing you're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. You're hearing we always triumph. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And, and you're hearing about prosperity. You're hearing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hearing about healing and hearing about all these things. Hearing about how to control your thought life, have a sound mind. <clears throat> hearing about he gives his beloved sleep and, and falling asleep in the middle of a storm like last night and cut Z's. Ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> but, but faith coming is not enough. And faith, faith uh, being fed is not enough. Jesus is not talking here about faith being fed. He's talking about faith being released. In other words, bringing that believing that we get by hearing to a, a definite act of faith. A definite point of releasing it. You understand what I'm talking about? Because faith coming is not enough. In fact, you could, uh, <clears throat> you could just go through your whole life and be a complete failure when it comes to this, when it comes to receiving from God, uh, if you don't learn to move beyond releasing your faith. <clears throat> I liken it to this, an illustration. Um, there's, we've, we've had for years television in our culture, in, in the world, and television sends a signal to you, you know, a broadcast, a, a, a picture and a, and, a, and a sound to you. And you can watch television, whether it's the news or a documentary or whatever, you know, or formative or educational program. Something. You can watch that and, and you can receive information you, and, and that'll influence you. Isn't that right? And now, though, we've got this thing called the Internet. If you didn't know that, welcome to 2020. <clears throat> but the, in, the, the internet uh, goes two ways. Information comes to you. You can learn. You can, you know, get the information you need or whatever. But you can also send out information. Isn't that right? 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so television will influence you, whether, you know, good or bad. You can, of course, not, you don't, it's not just evil because of television, but good or bad. It'll influence you. But the, the uh, Internet, not only can you get the information you need or, or, or learn or whatever, get the, be influenced, but you can send out a signal and influence other people. Whether it's your business, sales in your business, or, or just an email telling them, giving them some information they need, you know. Isn't that right? In other words, it's a two-way thing. Hallelujah. And whenever, and whenever uh, the signal comes to you in television, that influences you. But whenever you're able to send a signal, now you're able to influence your world. Now you're able to direct your world. Amen. Amen. When faith comes, you see, that's the way faith is. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. When faith comes, you have the potential to change your world and direct your world. Isn't that right? But it's not until you bring your believing that came through hearing. It's not until you bring that believing to a definite act of faith, to a transaction of faith that it will do you any good. I said, amen. I said, amen. Can you say amen? Faith has to flow two directions. Isn't that right? To you and from you. It's a difference between television and internet. You can, you can uh, use your faith. Whenever faith comes, you've got all the potential in the world to, to have a victory in an area of your life. But unless you do something with that faith. Amen. I was talking the other day. We were, Brendan was helping me or something. I don't know where he, there he is. And, and he said something. I don't know if I can quote him exactly. Something to the effect, you know, a lot of people sitting around waiting for God to do something. Yeah. And he's waiting on them to get up and do something. Yeah. Yeah. He'll bless what you put your hand to. But exactly. I said, you're exactly right. Yeah. Preach that. So he didn't preach it, so I'm preaching it for him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's absolutely the truth. We got to get off our bohonkas and stop, stop sitting on the couch and just waiting for God to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So notice, notice what he said. The, the reason I got all that out of Mark eleven twenty four 24 is because I say unto you that whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, there's the, there's the release of the faith. Believe that you receive. Now all that faith you've got, you've, you've, you've put it into one big transaction with heaven. You're not just carrying around in your heart anymore. Now you've got it in circulation. <laughs> Amen. When it comes to faith or receiving from God, there needs to come a point that you make that transaction and you do it by releasing it. Mark eleven twenty three 23 is releasing it in words. Mark eleven twenty four 24 is releasing it in prayer. Believe that you receive. That's a definite point of doing that. When you pray. When you pray. Now go over to John chapter number 11. Jesus did this in words over here in John chapter number 11. He found out about Lazarus being dead. He got to Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha said he's dead. Well, he had already told him. He knew that ahead of time. But he said that in verse number uh, 22. I, uh, Martha said this to Jesus, and this is Mark, uh, I mean, uh, John eleven twenty two. I know that now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, he will give it thee. Yeah. See, she just opened the door right there. She just enabled him, gave him the uh, ability to use his faith on her behalf. Yeah. 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 That's really good. Yeah. Notice what Jesus did instantly. Look at verse 23. I want you to notice verse 23. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Woo. He just planted his faith right there. He just practiced Mark eleven twenty-three. 23. If you'll say it, don't doubt it. Believe those things which you say will come to pass. He'll, you'll have whatever you say. Jesus, amen. Jesus took a stand of faith right there. He just took the faith he had and planted it. He got it into the circumstance. He got it into the situation. In other words, he had faith in his heart, but he, got, he released it and planted it into the situation. 
it being planted in your heart is one thing, but you've got to get it out and put it into the situations of life. And that's what Jesus did. He didn't just carry his faith around. He put it in circulation. And so Jesus took that stand. He established what was going to happen by saying it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the devil's done or what he's doing. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to mix faith with what, what the Word says. And plant that and get that Word, that faith, put in the devil's mix. When he's stirring stuff up, get your faith in the mix. Get your faith in the mix. And here's how you do it. You just say, this is the way it's going to turn out. I want to announce before heaven, hell... God, all the angels, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, all the demons of hell, this is the way it's going to be. And release that faith. That's what Jesus did. Isn't that an amazing thing? He, he released that faith, and he got his faith in the, big, in the mix and began to turn it the way God wanted it. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to notice Matthew 17, 20. You can go there if you want. I'm not going to take much time. Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said about faith, said something about faith. He said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd say. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say, amen, to this mountain. Be thou removed, be, and, uh, to, uh, uh, hence to yonder place, and it shall, it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible. Notice he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd say, what do you do with a mustard seed to get it to do something? You plant it. You plant it. In the seed bin or seed bag, in the garage or in the barn, wherever, it's not going to do any good. It won't do anything. But to get a mustard seed to do its mighty work, you got to plant it. So Jesus said, if you had faith that you plant... Now, he could have been talking about the size. Mustard seed's real small. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing. I'm not preaching against that or anything. But I'm emphasizing the fact you've got to plant the seed. It doesn't matter how small it is. Plant it. Well, because the devil tells everybody, you just don't have much faith. Well, how much do you think you need? Let me see if I quote this right. Let me, is, this, is this right, Evan? Uh, who's, if you had faith as a mountain, is that what that says? You'd say to this mustard seed, huh? No, you've had faith as a mustard seed. You'd say to this mountain. Just whatever you got, use it. It's not about how big, how little. Just use what you got. Just use what you got. And it'll do mighty things. It'll do mighty things. So that's what Jesus did. He planted his faith. He, isn't that right? He treated his faith as a seed by planting it. And he said, if you'll do that, nothing will be impossible to you. Isn't that what he said at the end? Verse 20, uh, remove hence to yonder place, it shall remove. And nothing, nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing. See, in other words, this is how you put the greater one to work for you. Woo. No, it's not our power. It's not our might. But this is how we put the power of God to work for us. You got a little seed in a, in a seed bag, and it's powerless in that seed bag. But you get that in the ground, and you start, that thing gets germinated. Oh, man. Yeah, you can get a big tree so big. You can't. I got trees on our land. I got three, let's see, three, I think four cotton tree, cottonwood trees. They get real big. And three people can't get their hands around them. But you know what? You get down there at the base, it's that big. But you know what? It started with just a little seed. Just a little seed. Oh, glory. And it's lasted through all these winds and all these storms. Just standing there stalwart. Yes, sir. Woo, glory. That's a powerful thing that came up out of that little seed. But it would have done nothing if that seed hadn't been planted. So Jesus is saying, treat your faith like a seed. He's saying nothing will be impossible to you if you'll treat your faith like a seed. That means you can take control of the outcome of the situations of life, no matter what the devil's doing. <laughs> he's, he's stirring stuff up, he's stirring stuff up, and you put your faith into it. Like Jesus did right there. He said, your brother's going to rise again. 
the devil kept trying to get, make, kept trying to hold Lazarus in death, yeah, yeah. in death, and all of a sudden something started working against him. Yes. Yeah. Jesus spoke that, and those words started bringing his plan to a screeching halt. Yes. Finally, it stopped, and Jesus said, "Lazarus, come forth!" Woo! Yes. What the devil had was pushing this way, turned around and went that way. Hallelujah. Once you've planted a seed, you can't dig it up. Amen. Don't dig up your seed. In other words, once you've said it, don't start wavering and say, well, I thought, I thought, but you see, the symptoms haven't changed, so I guess it's not working. Well, you just dug up your seed. The devil can't dig your seed up, but he'll sure hand you every shovel he can find. Well, you haven't ever heard anybody get a victory like that, though. You're saying, believe in God for this and that. Well, you haven't heard anybody. Well, you got a word on it. You got a, you got a Bible verse on it. It doesn't matter if nobody's ever. You've never heard any testimony. If you got a Bible verse for it, it'll work. I said, it'll work. Are you out there? How many have ever had the devil hand you shovels? I mean, he, sometimes he hands me shovels like seven times a day. He's just like, here, now that's not going to work. And he wants me to dig that seed up. Amen. Isn't that right? He wants you to do it because he can't. Don't give the devil too much credit. He can't. If you've planted a seed, he can't dig that up. But he wants you to do it, but don't you do it. How many of you have read the Bible? Having done all to stand, stand. I remember, uh, I don't know, probably this could have been 10, more, 10 or 15 years ago. I was watching Christian television, and a minister of a Pentecostal denomination was on there. He, had, he told his testimony, told, told all that had happened. He had been on his way to church one Sunday morning, and he was, I guess, an, I guess a car swerved out of its lane or something and hit him, and uh, he died. And, uh, went, of course, went to heaven. And uh, while he was in heaven, God showed him, or Jesus, I guess, showed him around. Showed him different things, and, and he had quite a testimony of all that he had seen and heard. You know, you hear about these testimonies. I'm not saying every one of them's, every one of them's genuine, but, you know, there's plenty of good ones and genuine ones. So he was telling all that, and I'm watching this on, on Christian TV. And uh, in the process of him telling his testimony uh, and, and recounting all that he had seen, how many of you believe heaven's real? Man, I'm, I'm more and more convinced all the time of all the glories of that place. Now, I don't have an uh, escape hatch Christianity, though, where, you know, if the rent's due tomorrow and I don't have it, I'm saying, Jesus, come now. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. How I many of you know people do that? Oh, it'd be a good time to come right now, Jesus. No, just live in victory while you are down here. Amen. Amen. So, but anyway, he's telling about all this, and, and I enjoyed his testimony and was, was getting a lot out of it. But in the process of him telling the testimony, uh, because he was, he was telling it on testimony, and, I mean, on television, and, and he was testifying and encouraging people, of course, to go to that place and do what they needed to, get saved, you know, do what they needed to in order to go to that place. And so uh, he was telling all this, and in the process of his story, he recounted how that whenever he, G G Jesus finished showing him around, Jesus said to him, you know, you can't stay here now. I, you have to go back. I want you to share what you've seen and so forth and so on. Of course, nobody ever wants to come back. You've been in heaven. Nobody wants. You don't have any record in the Bible of anybody who's ever been in heaven wanting to come back. And the record we have, any record we have of anybody in hell in the Bible, they all want it out. Get a clue. <laughs> Come on, preach it. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Remember the rich man and Lazarus? Yeah. Lazarus, yeah. Uh, you know, he was enjoying the blessings of God. But, but the rich man, he wanted out of there. He wanted out of there. Yeah. So, but, so he didn't want to come back. But Jesus said, no, you got to go back. You got to testify. Tell, tell people what you've seen. And so he came back. And uh, he told the story about in the process of his, uh, his recovery from the accident. He had had 34 operations. I'm like, oh, my goodness, 34 operations. I mean, you got a bed at the hospital. You just stay there. Well, how do you go through 34 operations? That's a lot of operations. I wasn't being, I wasn't being critical or anything. I was just like, man, that's a lot of going to the hospital. Um, so, uh, but anyway, 
I was just minding my own business. I was enjoying the testimony. I didn't have a negative thought in my mind about this man. And I don't mean when I'm getting ready to say negative. It's just sometimes the Lord makes things my business when I don't think it is my business. Because I told the Lord, that's not my, because the Lord said to me, he said there, he said, and, and I came, I've had 34 operations to get things straightened out in my body after that operation. I didn't, I didn't think critically about that, except the Lord spoke to me and said, watch and listen and you'll learn why. Well, I perked up. You know, I want to learn. Anybody still learning? I'm learning. I haven't learned it all. I mean, the first person says they've learned it all. They're lying. So this man, uh, he's telling that. And I, and I just, I just kind of, you know, it sometimes shocks me when the Lord involves me in things. But really, a lot of times it's to teach me. And, of course, I'm a faith and healing preacher, so I can help other people. But, but I'm more interested in me than I am you. I'm, I'm trying to be lovely toward everybody. But how many of you know just the truth? You're more interested in your own life than you are anybody else's life. So I want to learn. Don't be critical of me of saying that. You're, you're saying that you're, you're the same way. I mean, you don't pray near as much for me as you do for you. And that's fine. That's fine. I don't pray near as much for you as I do for me. So, <laughs> Amen. I mean, God's not going to have you do as much praying for me as I pray for me. I'm talking about my personal life, you know. And he's not going to have me do all your praying either. He's going to have you do your praying. Anyway, I'm taking too much time. I'm having too much fun this morning. Uh, but so I'm, I'm just uh, minding my own business. And the Lord said, watch and listen, and you'll learn why. Because he had been through all those operations. Well, uh, so I said, all right. And I perked up. I said, I know I still can learn. Amen. So, and, uh, so he said that. And I said, uh, and he went on and uh, told more of his testimony. He wasn't just testifying. He kept going back to the Word. I appreciated his testimony. When you're telling your testimony, keep going back to the Word. Yeah. Keep going back to the Word. Yeah. Keep going back. Give people. See, faith doesn't come by hearing you or my testimony. Faith comes by hearing the Word. Yeah. And, and he would tell about something that he saw in heaven, and then he'd say, and you know what? The Bible says that exact same thing. He'd take them to a verse. He'd show them it in the Word. And see, people's faith out there is coming. Yes, people, come, people getting faith out yes. there. And I appreciated the way he shared it. And so he was in the process of uh, uh, finishing his testimony. And the host of the program, who's, you know, hosting the TV program, he said, well, well why don't you just lead people in the salvation prayer and, and lead them to uh, Jesus and lead them in a prayer so they could go to that place or some, some words to those effect. And so I'm expecting him, you know, that he would uh, bring people to a point of releasing faith in Jesus. You know, confess him with your, your, their mouth and believe that he's Savior. He's rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. He came to prepare a place for us, or he went to prepare a place for us, and he went so we could come there and be there with him. Praise God. I thought he'd pray something along that line. He started praying. I mean, wouldn't that be what you expect? But he started praying, and I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget how he said it. Like I said, this 10 or 15 years ago. He just rambled on and on in his prayer, help them, Lord, draw them to you, Lord, give them strength to do the right thing and come to you, Lord. And he just kept going on and on and on and on like that and just kept rambling and, and, and he ended his prayer without ever popping the clutch. You know what I mean by popping the clutch? Without actually giving them, bringing them to a point of a transaction with heaven for salvation. Amen. A definite point of releasing their faith for salvation. He never did do it. And he said, Amen. Now, I'm, I, I'm so conscious of his lack of leading people to a release of faith for salvation that I'm sitting there almost feeling like I myself am in a, I'm hanging out there in the spirit realm, you know, needing to be saved and I can't get saved. That's how real that was to me. I don't know if you can understand what I'm talking about or not. Almost felt like I needed myself. I, I, I almost started shouting at the salvation. Hey, lead them into faith. Lead them to release their faith. Do you know sitting out there, I'm convinced. Sitting out there, all those people that heard that, who knows? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. I don't know how many people heard that because this is a worldwide television channel. Who knows? Let's just say 100,000 people heard that that needed to be saved yep. and I'll guarantee you faith somebody out there believed that testimony about him going to heaven and and what he said about the word in line with the word his experience was in line with the word I'll guarantee you faith came yes. 
But I also guarantee you, not a single person got saved that day because of that broadcast. You understand that? I don't know if you can understand that or not. Why? Because he didn't bring them to a point of releasing their faith. Faith come, came by hearing. I said faith came by hearing. But that's not enough. I said that's not enough. Amen. He left them out there hanging in the spirit realm. Amen. I said amen. It became obvious to me as I listened to that, that he didn't either, he either didn't know how to do that, or he wasn't very skilled at it. I'm talking about releasing their faith. Amen. He himself wasn't very good at it, or he wasn't very skilled at it, or he didn't know how, or something. I mean, can you see that? Amen. Amen. And therefore, he couldn't help other people do it because he himself wasn't very good at doing it. Amen. That's why he struggled so much after the accident. Amen. That's why the Lord said to me, watch and listen. He said he had had 34 operations. Now, I'm not criticizing people for having operations. You could, you could misunderstand what I'm saying. I, like I said, I wasn't trying to be critical. I, just I heard the Lord speak inside. He said, watch and listen, and you'll learn why. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now, how many of you believe God has something better than 34 operations? Yes. Sure he does. Yes. Now, I'm not criticizing. I want to say it again. I'm not criticizing having an operation. I'm just simply saying the Lord used that situation to teach me about the necessity of coming to a point of releasing that faith. And, and there needs to be any, any, any walk of faith you're walking right now, there needs to be a time where you can point back and say, back here, right here, right there. That's when I release my faith. And that's the point that it started working, and I haven't changed from that point, believing that I have received, or believing when I said those words, that planted that seed, and that got that working. There needs to be a point. If you don't have a point, you're not in faith. Amen. When you pray. When you pray. Say, when you pray. Well, we're going to look more at this this morning. But see, this is not just for salvation. How many of you know faith is, con faith is for many other different things? I said it's for many other different things. Amen. Now, this is, this is uh, something that believers need to get good at. Go over to John chapter number 11, verse number 23. I'll show you this. Jesus talked about, or, or the Bible actually, after Jesus was done preaching, talked about what some people that believed on Jesus in the 11th chapter, John's chapter number 11. Uh, no, excuse me, that's the wrong passage. Where am I looking for here? John chapter number 9, that's what I'm looking for. John chapter number 9. And uh, notice, let's read verse number uh, I got out of John chapter number nine, verses six and seven, John chapter nine, verses six and seven. You learn anything this morning? Uh, that's not it either. Something, I got something wrong. Can you tell I got something written down wrong? Uh, but let me just, I, I look up, I got it here somewhere in my, my notes, but you remember whenever, uh, yeah, here it is. John 12, 42, John 12, verse number 42. Notice it says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. Notice, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They believed on Jesus, but they did not release that faith. They wouldn't act on it. They didn't confess him. Are you there? How many of you know those people are not saved? Well, now wait a minute, Pastor. You just got to watch it. Well, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. James chapter number 2. What is it? Verse 17, 7, 19, something like that. You believe, well, verse 17 says, uh, faith without works or corresponding actions is dead, what? Being alone. And he says, you believe there's one God? There's James 2, verse 17, 18, 19. You believe there's one God? 
He said, let's go over there. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. This is so important. So important. James chapter number 2. You believe that there's one God? Look at James chapter 2. Verse number 17, so faith without works is dead. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. I will show thee my faith by my works. That means corresponding actions. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one God? Congratulations. That's what he said. Congratulations. Verse 19, the devils also believe and tremble. Huh? They believe God, there's one true God, the one true living God, but they won't act on it. I said, they're not going to do anything about it. Amen. I don't know if you're getting this or not this morning. They won't submit to his will. They're in rebellion against him. Amen. See, it's a counterfeit faith. There's a lot of people that, that say they have faith. And they, because they're not acting on it, they're not, doing, they're not getting a thing. Not getting a thing. Now, even in true, when it comes to salvation. You know, there's a lot of people that Jesus died, believe that Jesus died and rose again in our nation. Amen. But they won't do anything about it. They won't invite him into their life, confess him as Lord and Savior in their life. I got my own thing right now. I got, I got things I need to do before I serve God. You know what kind of faith they have? Demon faith. Huh? <laughs> I'm preaching better than your amen. That's demon faith. Demons believe and tremble. That's the way demon faith acts. <clears throat> amen. They won't, they won't do anything about it just like the devil. That tells you whose influence they're under. You know, you think about that verse right there. Demons believe and tremble. That's saying there are no atheistic or no agnostic demons. <laughs> eh, we don't believe there is a God. Oh, they know there's a God. They know. They say they believe and tremble. They know there's a God. They just lie to other people and tell them there's no God. But they themselves know there's a God. Amen. That's what James 2 is telling us. When it says demons believe and tremble. Amen. 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 But see, this truth applies to healing. It applies to, find, you know, salvation. We just see it here. But it applies to everything else that we're believing for. Amen. You know you're not where you're at or I'm not where I'm at or whoever's not where they're at because they just believe something. You can believe, you can have a treadmill in your house and believe that if I get on there and walk a mile every day, I'll lose weight. That's demon faith. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's between you and God, not me. You understand? But I'm just simply saying, without doing something about it, it's just fake. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can have a heart full of faith for divine healing and stay sick. Remember Acts chapter number 14? There's verse 6 through 10 there. Paul preached at Lystra, and there sat a man, uh, Lystra being a cripple in his mother's room, never had walked. Same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceived that he had faith to be healed. Notice that. Had faith to be healed. He's sitting on crippled legs and has faith to be healed. Paul looked at him and said, he's got faith to be healed. He's still sitting there on crippled legs, but he's got faith to be healed. So when Paul realized he had faith to be healed, he said, stand up right on thy feet. And he acted on it and was healed. But there was a period of time there where he had faith but didn't do anything with it, and he's not healed. Boy, this is good tonight, or today. We, we need to hear this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, so what Jesus did there in John chapter number 11 is he just planted his faith. And so you and I need to get good at that. Well, but that was Jesus, Pastor. All right, the woman with the issue of blood. Bible said she heard of Jesus. How many know faith comes by hearing? 
what is that? Verse 23, I, I could be wrong. I didn't look it up again this morning. Verse 23, 24, somewhere down in through. She heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind. She said, touched the garment. For she said, for she said. Yes. Now, there's a, uh, there's a play on the word there. You look it up. She kept saying. Yes. In the Greek. She kept saying. What did she say? When I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She just planted her faith. She just established. She just decreed a thing. And the very thing she decreed was established to her. See, that's called releasing her faith. And she put the very point at which it'll happen. She said, I'll just touch the hem of his garment and I'll be healed. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you just can't boss God around. I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll do it when he wants to. Jesus said, Jesus didn't control that really. Jesus, by the time Jesus knew it, it had already happened. See, there's a lot of things that are up to you that, that, uh, that people are leaving up to God and God's saying, I'll just, I'll just do whatever you say. Not, not in a carnal way, but in line with the word, in line with the word. But see, if you make a point of contact, yeah. the Lord will meet you at that point yes. of contact. Yes. Yes. There needs to be a point at which you, your, your faith comes to one climatic transaction. Yes. Yes. And that's it. Yes. And you say, that's it. Whether, yes. whether it's laying on of hands yes. or whether you're in your own prayer closet yes. and you're meditating on the word, on. you say, here it goes. Yes. I'm getting out of the boat, and I'm going to release my faith. <laughs> yeah, but that was Jesus. Well, that's the one with the issue of blood right there. You can find person after person that did that in the Bible. David did it. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take your head off, and so forth and so on. And then he just he released his faith. And then he did exactly what he said. Hallelujah. I've heard some of you. I'm thinking of some right now in the congregation. You said, now, because they had revelation from heaven. I mean, every faith comes by hearing. You hear from God. They said, we're going to have this many children. Then there's going to be this many boys and then the girl. And then we're done. You know what's happening? Exactly what they said. <laughs> well, you know, that's all up to God. Well, sure, but, but you realize God had spoken to them. And so they released their faith. Ooh, and it's yeah. coming to pass. Yeah, amen. Coming to pass. Hallelujah. The other day, Justin and I were talking about aviation, and I was, uh, I was talking. I was telling him some things Dr. Dufresne had said to me about aviation. He'd share things every now and then. And he said, uh, he wasn't trying to be critical, but he had just had a lot of trouble finding good, good airline or aviation mechanics. Yeah. They want to tell you you need things. Because, you, you, you know, you and I don't know enough about airplanes to know if I need that thing on there or not. Yep. Or, you know, so, but they'll tell you. He said, a lot of them tell you if you need things, you don't really need it. Yeah. Because they make more money and stuff. So he said, he went on and he was, brother, Dr. Dufresne was telling me about the trouble he had had. And he had found one brother Copeland uses or down there. And so he used, started using him. But uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. Don't want to accuse people of a racket. But, you know, just an industry that has some problems. <laughs> So, but anyway, and so I was telling Justin that, not, not necessarily in unbelief, just some things we're going to have to watch out for and learn about and so forth and so on. And uh, so then he and I got busy and he was doing something, I was doing something. He walked over about 15 minutes ago, I mean 15 minutes later, and said, uh, you know, I got to thinking, he said, somebody was born just to fix our work on your plane, Pastor. Amen. I said, yes, sir, amen, amen. amen. That we'll come in contact with him. We'll come in contact with him. He walked away, and I said, yeah, I know what he just did. He just planted his faith right there. <laughs> Set it in motion. Get it going. I don't know about you. I'm preaching me happy this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 2.17, thou believest that there is, well, actually, there it says, without faith, without works is dead. Being alone, James 2, 17. Faith without corresponding actions is dead. Being alone. So what is, what is he saying? Believing doesn't take any corresponding actions on your part. But receiving does. 
You understand? Yeah. You can believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. But if you're going to receive him, but, but see, that believing doesn't require any action. But if you're going to receive him and be saved, that requires some action. Yeah. That requires you to confess him and make him Lord. Yeah. Isn't that right? So that's what he's saying. Believing really doesn't take any corresponding actions on your part, but receiving does take action on your part. That's why more people believe than receive. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, but faith coming is not enough. You must put that faith into circulation, and it's actions that, and in speaking that puts it into circulation. <laughs> Pastor Debbie and I have done this so many times. We pretty much live by planting a seed. Now, now, yes, we give offerings and tithes. And so forth. I'm not talking about that, though. I'm just talking about something comes up, and we say how it's going to be. We just, we just if that happens once or twice a day, I, it just happens all the time. We just say how it's going to be. And we're keeping our faith in motion all the time. Brother Dr. Summerall, Dr. Summerall said, Keep, your faith must be reborn every day. Yes. Yes. And, and if you listen to the context of him saying that, he's not talking about feeding on the Word of God so faith will come to you every day. That's true too, but, but Dr. Summerall wasn't talking about that. He was talking about releasing it every day. And when every day when you release it, yes, yes, feed it every day, but every day release it. And every day when you release it, it's like it comes alive again and goes to work for you again. <laughs> Woo, I love living this way. I'm high as a kite living this way. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor you wouldn't look so sad if you'd learn it too. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Faith comes by hearing, but it doesn't work by hearing. I said it doesn't work by hearing. Tell your neighbor it comes by hearing, but it doesn't work by hearing. Amen. If you don't use some of the faith you've got, it won't matter that you get more faith. You know, people are focused on getting more, getting more. Well, you should be focused on faith growing. But listen, faith doesn't grow just by hearing more. Unless you act on the faith you have, it's not going to ever develop. You got to get out of the boat and, and plant, state something, decree something. And boy, oh boy, you'll start seeing the power of God. Start seeing things work, and boy, your faith will grow. Remember the Bible talks about 2 Thessalonians. You ever read that verse, 2 Thessalonians? Your faith groweth exceedingly. Is it 2 Thessalonians 1, 3? We're bound to give thanks always to you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Amen. And the love of every one of you towards each other aboundeth. Well, your faith growing exceedingly doesn't happen just by feeding it. You got to act on it. Step out and say something. Step out and release it. Isn't that right? Nowhere does the Bible teach that if you just believe something in your heart that you'll get the answer. Amen. It teaches releasing your faith. Doesn't it? Amen. It's not necessary to be loud to release your faith. I've released faith just in the nighttime praying, praying about something, wake up maybe. I, I don't know, just a pattern with me somehow or another. I usually... <clears throat> I like to get eight hours of sleep usually, um, but uh, for some reason or another, most every night I'll get five hours and then wake up, and I'll usually pray an hour or two, just depends, and then I'll go back to sleep, and uh, I enjoy those times. The house is quiet, you know, just, just you pray and your mind's quiet and stuff like that, and so, uh, but, but over, over, you know, many of those situations, I just prayed in the Holy Ghost until I saw that what I needed to do about a situation. And whenever I saw what I needed to do, I'd, I'd release my faith. I said, that's it. That's it. I got it. I got it. Yep, I'm going to do that. And this is how it's going to turn out. But I didn't even say it loud enough to wake her up. Amen. It's not what's coming out of you physically. It's what's coming out of your spirit. Amen. Now, I always say it. I, I whisper it. I don't just think it. I didn't say you'll have what you think. He didn't say you'll have, he said you'll have what you say. So I'll just say it in a whisper, just so quiet. I mean, if I, I said it's quiet right now, as I do in the bedroom there, you probably might not even hear me, but I just say it and I say, yep, that's it. I'll, I'll do that. Thank God. I'm going to do this and this is what's going to happen. Ha, ha, ha. I'll go back to sleep. 
Hallelujah. See, faith is of the heart. But it's got to be in the heart and the mouth. And so I just say it, and, and uh, it's what comes out of your spirit that really matters. Hallelujah. You can tell whenever you've received something. If I handed you my Bible right here, would you be able to tell when you received it? Sure, you could actually, you could, there's a tangibility to that. And there's a tangibility to laying hold of something with your spirit. And whenever you say it, you know you just hooked it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's like hooking a fish. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's like hooking a fish. You, 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 you can tell whenever that, that bite comes and you... Yeah. But see, then you got to keep the tension on that line. Because if you let the tension off, he could get that hook out of his mouth. So whenever you hook it, just hold fast. Just keep on saying it. Yep, yep. Ha uh-huh. ha. I said it. That's what's coming to pass. Thank you, Lord. It'll be as I say. And that's a release of faith. Hallelujah. Don't let your miracle jump off the line. You know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. All right. So contend for this kind of faith, not just the kind that you carry around in your heart. Jude 1, 3, you remember? Earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Contend for this. Contend for a living, active, dynamic faith. Contend to have a spirit of faith. Not just a heart full of faith. Yeah, amen. Contend to have a faith that somebody looks and says, your faith is growing exceedingly. Woo, look at what God's doing for you. Contend for that. Amen. How many of you know he's telling us there are other things we're contending for it? So you're going to have to contend for it. So the other things are wanting to strip it away from you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, another verse along this line, Hebrews 4.2. Uh, you can go over there. And while you're turning there, you just have to realize that what I'm saying is, amongst other things, is that people mistake the hearing of faith for being in faith. And then they wonder why nothing is happening. Well, there's no action. They haven't stated a statement of faith like Jesus did, like the one with the issue of blood did, like Justin did. Boy, that's pretty good company. You're with Jesus and the one with the issue of blood. <clears throat> Stating faith. See, I let some faith projects up to other people here, and I don't do all the believing anymore. Lord, Pastor, I got this department in my heart. Well, we've had you in our heart for that department too. Let's put you in there. Yeah. Now we're going to watch to see if you're going to use your faith or if you're going to leave it all up to us. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll, see. we'll see if we're going to keep you in that department. You know yes, what I'm sir. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not picking on you. See, he's just on the front row, and that's why he gets <clears throat> Hallelujah. Did you find? See, let me say that statement again. Did you go to Hebrews 4 too? But let me say that statement again. People mistake the hearing of faith for being in faith. And then they wonder why nothing is happening. Well, there's no action to it. Amen. This is where people are primarily missing it, by the way. Amen. They believe in, but they're not receiving. They don't believe that they've received. That's that's, that's the transaction. Amen. Hebrews 4, 2. Let's look at it. Have you found it? Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2 says, Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Amen. Notice, you got to mix faith with what you hear. Amen. And then mix that faith you got from the word in with the circumstances of life. You got to mix it. You know, you put ingredients in a mixing machine. I grew up helping my mom make cookies. You know, I, I don't know why I like to make, help her make cookies. You put the dough or the flour in there and all the stuff, you know. And then I, mommy, mommy, I want to I turn on the mixer. So she would let me turn on the mixer. I enjoyed mixing that up. Well, you got to do that with your faith. When, 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 when circumstances are getting all stirred up, you got to put your faith in there. Just like Jesus with Lazarus. Put his faith in there. Boy, it'll stop the devil's mix, I'll tell you that. (laughs) Faith is a powerful thing. It'll stop the devil in his tracks. Hallelujah. Isn't that what John or Jesus did in John chapter number 11? Isn't that what the woman with the issue of blood did? Now think about that. Mix faith with with them that heard it. Mix faith 
with them, in them. Uh, they did not. Uh, let me go back here and read it for again. Verse 2. The word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. All right. So the, the word, notice he's saying these things, all that the Bible says won't do us a bit of good. Won't do us a bit of good. That's what he said, will not profit them. Did not profit them. I see a lot of Christians like that today. I, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth about it. I, I, I'll be honest with you. It's a little bit heartbreaking sometimes. People you love. But see, you can't do the word for them. You can't get out of the boat for them. I'm tempted to. I'm tempted to just push them in. You know what I'm talking about? Get out of here. Get, in the, get, get out there into the... Walk on water. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of blessings out there for you. That's why I'd push them in, not because I don't love them, because I want them to see them blessed. You know you love people and you want to see them blessed. It's like, how long are you going to sit on all that faith you got and pray that something happens? One of these days, my ship's going to come in. Why don't you send your words out and tow it in? Why don't you get, get your words out there and hook it? Hook it. Bring it in. Believe what you say comes to pass. Hallelujah. So, but faith won't profit you if you don't mix the, uh, faith with the Word. But here, mixing faith with the Word means releasing it. Amen. He's not just talking about believing the Word. Faith comes by hearing, and you can believe what you heard. But mixing it talk, is talking about words and actions. Amen. Amen. I like what some a minister said one time over there in James. that said, faith without works is dead being alone. There are many different expressions of faith. He said it that way, faith without expressions. And you can express faith in words. You can, and, and release faith in words. You can express and release faith in a laugh. Isn't that right? You can express and release faith in praising God. But you can also express and release faith by acting. Just acting as if the Bible's true. Acting if it's, that's, if it, as if that's true. I heard a story the other day of a lady. She had lived wickedly all her life. Uh, this is a Raymond employee's aunt, I believe it was, years ago. She had lived pretty promiscuous and, you know, just everything the world does. Didn't want anything. <laughs> you talk to her about Jesus, she'd get all mad. Didn't want to talk about Jesus. <clears throat> Didn't want to think about him. Uh, but she got cancer. Doctors only gave her, I forget, a couple months to live, something like that. And uh, this employee went to Brother Hagin and said, uh, agree with me. I'm going up there to talk to her. She needs Jesus desperately. <laughs> you know, she's going to die, go to hell if she doesn't get right with God. So agree with me that uh, she'll, she'll, you know, be open, that the Lord will open the eyes of her understanding. So Brother Hagin agreed. And he went up there. I mean, this, this employee went up there and uh, just talk small talk. You know how it is. You, hi, you haven't seen you for a while. Hi, all that. And then uh, he said, would it be all right if I read you some Bible verses? And she started, tears started coming down her eyes. She said, sure, honey. And so he said, he got out his Bible. And he said, he read Mark 11, 23, or 24, actually. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. That's one of the verses. She said, is that in the Bible? And he said, yeah. Well, I desire healing. She said, let me see that Bible. He, she grabbed the Bible. She wanted to see, it, see if that was really in there. Yeah, it's in red. What things serve you desire when you pray. Believe you receive them and you have them. Oh, she said, well, that's good enough. Then I believe I received my healing. I handed the Bible back to him. <laughs> Wasn't 10 days the doctor dismissed her and she's completely healed. Well, in a few days after that, she got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Higgins said, I was tempted to say, I haven't found such great faith. No, not in Ramah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm waiting for some people, just some winos or whoever to come in here out of the world and blow everybody in here away. 
haven't found so great faith in the Spirit of Faith Family Church as yes, some sir. wino came off the street. Hallelujah. Let's get her done. What do you say? Yeah. Woo, glory to God. Let's be releasing our faith. Yeah. I've done it. I've preached myself happy. I get high preaching faith. I just love preaching faith. Praise God. Can you see it this morning? You get anything out of that th this morning? Jesus in Luke 8, 25, after he rebuked the storm, he said, where is your faith? That'd be a good question we constantly ask ourselves. We know God's dealt to us the measure of faith. God dealt to every one of us believers the measure of faith. Isn't that what he said? But yet right on the, hand, on, on the other hand, uh, you can have faith and still stay sick and stay broke and stay busted and disgusted. Amen? Amen. Now, let me wrap this up. <clears throat> Amen. Are you ready to hear this, this final point here? Hallelujah. 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 Trials, tests and trials, have a way of locking us up in our minds and in the natural realm and holding us in the flesh and out of the spirit realm and from operating in faith. In other words, it grabs your attention and you're like, oh, and, you, and your attention's all on the test and trial. And because of that, we're not mixing any faith in there. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm talking about? If we're not careful, that's what tests and trials will do to us. And so, as a result, oftentimes, Satan will lock up our mouths. Just hold them shut. I'm telling you the truth. You know how I learned all this? I've watched it on myself. So he's locked up our mouths sometimes, and he holds our minds and our mouths in sense knowledge rather than revelation knowledge, where faith operates from. And when we allow that to happen, we start grasping with our mind, you know what I'm talking about, rather than releasing faith out of our heart. Amen. That's our spirit. How many of you know our faith? Faith is of the heart. With the heart man believeth. And uh, that faith, if we would unhook from the mind and the, and the natural realm, then that faith, if we could release our faith out of our heart, that faith would serve to defeat the enemy in those circumstances. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I know it's, it's almost time to quit, but we're, we're finishing up here. I'm going to get you out this morning, I think, sooner than you have for a while. So, Amen. 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 Brother Hagin used to always say, if the devil can hold you in the mental realm, he'll whoop you every single time. And if you hold him in the spiritual realm, you'll whip him every single time. What's he mean, hold him in the spiritual realm? Hold him in the realm of the yet unseen, but revealed by the Spirit through the Word of God. Hold him in that realm. In other words, he tries to say, yeah, but look at this. You say, but let, let the Word of God says it's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. And I said, based on it's written. See, he's just handing you, handing you a shovel once you dig that up. Hallelujah. We've, we're on to him, aren't we? Tell the devil right now. Look down under your foot and say, Yo, I'm on to you. Yeah, I got you now. I'm on to you. I know how you work. <laughs> Hallelujah. The greatest things that will ever happen to you will be when you uh, move out of the mental realm over into the uh, spiritual realm and operate in it by faith. I said, those would be the greatest things that ever happened to you. Uh, amen. 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 Uh, a lot of people are so accustomed to being locked up in their minds. What I mean by you know, in their mind, they're all figuring out the circumstances, figuring out, well, if I do this, then that. Well, how about releasing faith? But so many times Christians are so locked up in their minds you know, held in the, in the mental realm, thinking about their trouble and so forth, that they don't even know what we're talking about when we talk about releasing faith out of their spirits. You understand what I'm talking about? Faith is of the heart. And it'll, it'll work in your heart with doubt in your head. It'll work in your heart when your head can't figure out how it's going to work. Somebody said, but why, whenever I say the Word of God and I say my faith, why does just the devil harass me in my mind? He's trying to pull you out of the yeah, spiritual yeah. realm, get you back in the mental realm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 
sir. That's his strategy. Look down there again and say, I'm on to you now. I'm on to you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I'm not falling for that one anymore. Hallelujah. Uh, releasing faith is really an act of your spirit. Your spirit's getting the motion. Your mind's not involved. Well, 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 why do you say that? See, there's no reason in the natural for you to say that. I got it. I'm healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Ah, got it. Ah. The mind's sitting up there going, you got what, huh? What's going on? I don't know what you're talking about. You'll get as high as a kite if you'll learn to live this way. I don't know why I keep saying that this morning. I think some of us need to be high. <laughs> don't take that wrong out there. And, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about high on the Word, high on faith. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without practicing this, you'll just have more of a, di a, a, a passive, you know, inert faith. You're carrying it around all right, but it's not doing you any good. Amen. Then you're wondering why everybody else has a testimony and you don't ever have anything happen to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let me, let me say something here. Finish this up. Uh, the... Uh, the Word of God ought to be enough for you to release your faith. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, there are situations that people, that can happen where people will start releasing their faith. I, I, and, it's, and it's sometimes interesting how things work. I heard a story, Brother Copeland told a story about uh, years ago, he was outside down, I think it was down in Texas somewhere, real hot during the day preaching outside, some, some outside meeting. And he was going to pray with people, pray for people, lay hands on them, however, pray, we'll lay hands, whatever he's going to do, to be, for people to be healed. And he was going to anoint them with oil. He had a bottle of oil. Me, me telling this story. I told you that story. He had that bottle of oil sitting out there. And, you know, Brother Hagen, Brother, Brother Copeland, I mean, he's known for preaching long. At least it's good, you know, praise God. But he kept preaching, kept preaching that bottle of oil sitting out there. And it's in the sun. It's heating up. It's getting hot. And so come time for him to lay hands on people, he got that oil and put it on their head, and they'd feel that oil was hot. They all thought it was something supernatural. They thought it was some sort of sign of the power of God or something like that. And so he said, Brother, uh, Brother Copa said, person after person shout and said, oh, glory to God. Glory. And he said, person after person getting healed right there on the spot. Many times more people were healed in that meeting than most meetings. And Brother Copeland wasn't sure exactly what was going on at first because he wasn't using it as a gimmick. He didn't realize what was happening. But do you know what was happening? They were releasing their faith. What were they waiting for? Uh, some sort of, it wasn't a gimmick on purpose. Brother Copeland didn't try to do that. He wasn't thinking about what was happening. But, but they, they, they were releasing their faith because they, they, something spectacular happened. If I'm laying hands on the sick, and every person that I lay hands on gets knocked like they were hit with a 300-mile-an-hour with a wind and gets knocked to the back of the room against the wall, boy, the people would run up here to have hands laid on them, wouldn't they? Ooh, the power's flowing today. The power, it's just as much flowing whenever you don't see anything. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. See, whenever a person waits for some sort of supernatural thing like that to release their faith, that's proof positive they're carnal. And it's also proof positive they're going to miss 95% of everything God has for them because they're going to wait for something like that to release their faith. The Word is enough. Tell your neighbor, the Word is enough. Remember that adulterous woman? Brother Hagen's employee's aunt, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Word was enough for her. That's great faith. The Word's enough. Jesus said so whenever that man said, uh, you just, I'm not worthy you come into my room. Just say the Word. My, 
my daughter will be healed. Or my servant, excuse me, my servant will be healed. Jesus said, I haven't found so great faith. Not in Israel. Why was he, why was it great faith? The word was enough. Just the word. Just the word. I don't need you to do this. I don't need you to do that. Hallelujah. I don't need to see a halo above your head or a light. I don't need to see the glory of God. Don't need to see an angel. I just read the word and that's it. That's it. Hallelujah.